Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Agar IO. And on this episode, we are going to be continuing where we left off. Now, for those of you who watched the last episode, you'll know the game itself actually kind of freaked out on us. Like, uh, it froze on both of our screens. And yeah, it was weird. Yeah, and uh, you were saying you actually never run into that problem. No, that's the first time I've ever had that happen to me. And that was the second time I've had that happen to me today. Uh, I had never seen that problem before today, but on this server and one server previous, uh, which I actually caught on tape as well, the game itself froze. And it wasn't just us, because we waited around to, to see if we could get to number one on the leaderboard, because everybody else was leaving. So it wasn't that, you know, our computer or our connection or something along those lines messed up. Something on their end, something on their server side, uh, you know, malfunctioned, and everybody's game just froze. And so I don't know if they're doing some kind of updates or if that is just a common occurrence that we had just never seen before. But, you know, it was kind of weird. And hopefully we won't run into that. But I was just warning you guys in case uh, we do, you know what to expect. Uh, we kind of just have to leave the server and uh, get on another one. You know, it's just it's there's nothing you can do. You can stay there all day long and it won't ever recover from it. So, no, nope, it totally herper derped. But today, I completely forgot to introduce you, man. Sorry. Uh, for today, we are here with uh, one of our viewers. Dark Dragon. And, uh, you know, you may recognize him from some of the EverQuest videos that we've been doing recently. Uh, very, very cool to have so many people come out and join us and, and be a part of that because it really does... Oh, crap. That's not what I wanted to do. No, Elton John's eating me. Oh. Yeah. We're all cr crawling out of the wood, wood elf work. Get it? <laughs> Oh, I'm so dead. Oh, my God. I only have one little thing that survived. But, oh. yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely uh, enjoyable when you have a lot of people who, uh, you know, can go over there and, like, play this game or EverQuest. Uh, because when you have more people to play with, you can go to places that you normally don't get to go to very often. And, yeah. You know, there's there's one zone in particular that I really want to go to on EverQuest, which is Kedge Keep. It's an underwater zone. And for those of you who don't even know what we're talking about, this is another game that I do Let's Plays for. It's an RPG MMO, uh, and it's one of the first ones that came out. Not the first one. Ultima and a few others, I believe, were there before anybody else. But to my knowledge, it's the first, uh, you know, 3D, uh, you know, interactive, you know, MMO that was on the market that made a name for itself. It's one of the biggest ones. It came out in 1999, and... Uh, it's just, it's a really, really well done game that even stacks up to games uh, today. So, you know, we're playing that one. It's way better than World of Warcraft. The oh, only difference man. is, you just, you just is started World of Warcraft a fight. advertised. You, ju you just started a fight, man. There's tons of people out there who love World of Warcraft, and I can't blame them. You know, the game is good. It's not my cup of tea, to be honest. Uh, I, I played it for, I think, like eight, nine months. Uh, it was okay. I, I liked it, but. It didn't give me anything that I wasn't already getting from the other, like, three or four RPGs that I was playing. And, you know, that could be said for anything. Like, depending on which one you start with, you may start with World of Warcraft and be like, well, I went over to EverQuest, but that one didn't offer me anything new that I wasn't getting from War uh, World of Warcraft. So, it just, which ones do you find first? And so I kind of stuck... Crap, craft. No, no it's, it's not that bad, guys. Uh, it's, you know, for me, like I said, it wasn't my cup of tea, but... I know many, many of you guys, and I don't want to start the whole, you know, argument that a lot of people have EverQuest or World of Warcraft. I don't understand why they both can't coexist. You know, they're two different games, two different well, play styles, and, you know, they have their own fan following for both, so. If you want to get down to it, they're all just video versions of Dungeons & Dragons. Exactly. It is. It's just a, a Dungeons & Dragons kind of uh, game, and people very, very much enjoy that. And maybe Dungeons and Dragons weren't the first people who do who did it, but they're the most well known. And you guys know exactly what kind of style we're really talking about there. Uh, whether you use one name or another, it's just that particular RPG aspect that people highly enjoy, which is kind of mm -hmm. weird because when I grew up playing video games, RPGs were not very common. And now it seems like pretty much every game you play, whether it's a first-person shooter, a RTS, or whatever has actual aspects of RPG in them. You know, you get levels, you get uh, higher ranks, you can get different equipment that then you can upgrade. That's all, that's all RPG aspects that other games didn't used to have. I blame the girls. <laughs> Why is that? 
because that's when it started coming in with the. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Okay? I love RPG aspects right. in all my yeah. games. I, that's an awesome thing. Back before girls actually started playing games, it was all serious. You know, first person shooter was just you give a guy a gun and he runs around and shoots people. Duke Nukem. And then when girls. Right. And then when girls started playing, that's when the role playing part started coming into it because girls have a higher affinity with role playing than males. I don't know about that. I'd probably no, have to disagree with a, you on that one because if you look no. at like RPGs like Dungeons and Dragons, I don't know what neighborhoods you were hanging out with, but it was pretty much uh, just dudes. Like right. We didn't well, have too many women showing up and being like, hey, can we dress up with you guys and, and play Dungeons and Dragons? Paper and everything, yeah. Yeah. But look at cosplay and all that. That's mainly females. Well, it depends on which one you're going to. Like, yeah, I would say mainly the females dress up, but most of the females I actually see at those those conventions are being paid. And the ones that aren't, they like dressing up, and that's why they're doing it. They're not really hardcore gamers. I'm not saying women are not hardcore gamers, because you guys are, and I hope that more and more of you guys uh, join in and, uh, you know, kind yeah, of uh, join no the such community. Thing as cosplay without the women. But that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of them are just paid to be there. They even do the same thing for guys on occasion, where they pay them right. to dress up like a certain, you know, character or whatever. But a lot of women, uh, you know, make their living modeling the different cosplay outfits and then mm -hmm. selling like signatures and, and photographs and stuff like that. Those to me aren't the uh, the community. They're the people who supply the community. You yeah, know? they're the employees. Right. Well, the the people not who are giving, leads. they're not the ones who eat the content. They're the ones who supply the content. And mm -hmm. so when I think about the community, I think about, you know, the people who are actually showing up in the background. And I've gone to several of those. I'm not famous. I'm not anybody big. And so I'm just in line like the rest of you guys waiting for uh, four or five hours for like a 10 second trial of a brand new game that nobody else gets to see for another six months. Uh, so you think of it as worthwhile, but you know, you're waiting in line a long, long time. And though people, the people I see waiting in line, the ones that aren't cutting to the front because they have a, a company or something along those lines, uh, you know, they're normally not dressed up. Not a lot of people do that. It's the same thing as the Renaissance Festival. I go to that every year, and I have been going to that every year for probably about 14, 15 years. And I've always dressed up except for the first two or three years. And, uh, you know, when you go, what I've noticed is for a while there, fewer and fewer people would dress up. Now, I go during Halloween weekend, and the rules there are if you have a costume, you can wear it. And so right. people will wear a costume that has nothing to do with the Renaissance Festival, but it still adds to the overall feel. And you'd be surprised, most costumes still add something to the atmosphere. You know, a lot of people would go as pirates. You know, pirates maybe not so much Renaissance, but it feels right. You know, it has the the baggy clothing and the little guns and stuff like that. It, it, it feels like it could go. And I just like being part of, of a day where more people are dressed up. It feels more interactive. It feels more uh, friendly. Usually everybody is incredibly friendly at the Renaissance Festival. I've never, ever seen anybody being angry there. I won't say that it never happens because I'm sure, you know, like with anything else, uh, there's always the exception. But... You know, the same thing for the Comic-Cons and stuff. When you dress up, it just uh, it adds to the excitement. It adds to the overall feel. I've never dressed up at a Comic-Con. I have to be completely honest. I don't know of any character in any video game that matches the way I look, even remotely, because I'm a pretty big guy. You know, so I, I want to make... I want to do a character that I actually look good in. I don't want to be like the guy who goes in there, tries to dress as Superman... And has to go get like 14 Superman costumes and sew them together. You know, like, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. I could. I have no problem with my body. And I could get out there proudly and shake it for everybody to see. But, I, you know, I want to I wanna get in there and look cool and know that the costume I'm wearing is, is meant for a character and the size and the look that I have going. So as soon as I find somebody like that, I definitely will, you know, go out and, and spend a few hundred or a couple thousand bucks to... Uh, to get a really sweet costume because I go all the time uh, when I'm able to, you know. There's sometimes they're too far away, but I want to go a lot more to them. And Just like an ogre. I could actually do that. Ogres are pretty big. I don't think I could get used to wearing the face paint all day long, but I could try it. I could see how bad it was. I know 
you know, watching like the behind the scenes for Star Trek Voyager when they were talking to Neelix, and he was talking about how he would show up. Oh God. You didn't like that guy? Uh, yeah, no, I, I've seen that. He would show up at like six, seven o'clock in the morning for, for a five or PM shoot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then not get out to like two crap. or three in the morning the, the the previous day. I'm like, for what? I mean, you're getting what like an hour to leave without the crap on your face. But if you think about it, you've had that stuff on your face all day long. Probably an hour is just a miracle, you know? Yeah. Just to be able to rub your face and just be like, oh, you can breathe oh, for dear once. Oh Lord, here comes the IRS. Oh no! You know they just got hacked a while back. Eh, they're illegal anyway. But we're not going to talk about politics. Yeah, we try not to. But, yeah, I mean, you know, with the Comic-Con stuff, I don't know if I could get around walking around all day with, with the, the like, full mask on unless it was something like a Halloween costume. But those Halloween costumes are freaking hot. Like, if anybody's ever worn, like, the Jason uh, Voorhees mask or... Oh, yeah. You know, they're hot. After, like, 45 minutes of breathing into that, your your air alone... Because it doesn't go out the nostril like the mask shows. It fits perfectly on your face. It's not like in uh, Mission Impossible where, you know, they, they pull the mask off and you're like, ooh, that looks so real. Well, it looks so real because it was the actual actor playing the role, you know? Like, yeah, that's not how good... Just throw on a, a fake plastic thing just for the pull-off. Yeah, and you can see it, too. You yeah. can see when they do the switch and it's just like, yeah, the hair doesn't look real and the mask doesn't look real. If there are masks out there that are that, you know, convincing. They're not letting us know about them at the very least because that would well, cause so much chaos. Well, there are. You're just looking at like five, ten thousand dollars to buy it. Well, when you're talking about like Mission Impossible status, the money's not important. They, if, it, if it exists, they're going to use it. But yeah. I've never seen anything like that. I've never even heard of anything like that actually existing. So well, I can't say for sure. It's just custom made. That's all. Even custom made stuff, I don't think would fool you. I think the MythBusters did that once. They did the uh, the episode where they tried to see if those masks could be fooled, and they got a really expensive one. They they uh, they put it together, and at like a hundred yards or something like that, you could fool people slightly, but anything closer than that, and it would it's a dead giveaway because yeah. the skin is is plastic, you know, and plastic has a different feel to it. You can use uh, silicone and some of these other types, but they all have a different look than actual skin so unless you want it to be really advanced and really disgusting in my opinion and use like synthetic grown skin uh, from a live <laughs> sample and, and then put that on it. your face like leather face or something like that and go around like a serial killer uh, oh I would do leather face in a heartbeat that, no I, that, I never you couldn't convince me to put another person's skin on my face that's just why not, that, why not? what am I playing with here <laughs> do, you, do you have like knives all over your walls? Is did you make no. a nightshade out of somebody? No. Not yet. Is that the key? No. You did it out of cats instead. Uh, no, I love cats. <laughs> but humans is okay. You yeah. wouldn't wear a cat, but you'd wear a human. Yeah. You're you're sick, man. <laughs> Just tease it. And what's wrong with my sleeping bag? I mean, come on. Oh no, no, thank you. I actually, you know, now we're talking about cats. I don't know if it's a new fad or if it's a, a game that I'm not aware of or what, but there were a few people, uh, mainly women, who were dressed up with these giant uh, hats or heads that look like cats, and they're walking around with little tails and stuff like that. I don't know if that's a new yep. thing or what, but uh, it was very cool looking. I liked it. The only downside that I, I saw to it was I was sitting there watching one of the performances that were going on, and uh, a husband and wife came up there, and the husband was wearing like a full suit of armor. And he's moving around real slow. And so he went first up the stairs. And he got over there where he's sitting down. And his wife is pushing the uh, the stroller. And so she's, uh, you know, picking the stroller up and getting it over the stairs. And she gets up to the top. And she's, like, almost tripping over the last stair. Because she can't see a thing outside of that, that, hel- that little helmet hat thing, whatever you want to call it. You know, right. that looks like a cat. So, you know, I ended up helping her out on that one just because I felt bad for her. But... You know, I don't know if it's easy to walk around it is what I'm getting at. Those masks sometimes don't fit extremely well for every single person. Some people's heads are a little bit bigger, some are smaller, some are more wide. And so they make one that fits everybody, but yet uh, your eyes may have a hard time lining up with with the little eye sockets of uh, the little thing. No, oh, that guy tried to, tried to bait me. Masturbate you? So where are you at on the map? Uh, right side. The right side. Okay, I'm gonna 
I'm going to head over there as much as I can. I'm heading to the top right at the moment. Uh, I'm heading up there, too. Just glance over to that little list on the right side. Oh, yeah, number nine, man. You're doing pretty good. <laughs> no, don't. What, what's your uh, score up to? Uh, 1550. Wow, I'm only at uh, 585, but I can hold my own for the most part. I'm big enough that it's... What, what color are you? Blue. Oh, awesome. I'm heading down right now because I had a big guy that was following me. The Jake Awesome guy? Uh, light green guy. Light green. The OTF volts? Something like that. I don't know. But wow. he was following me right after I split. Uh, yeah, it was probably the OTF volts guy. Hey, My there you are, buddy. to your chin. Uh, I could eat this guy. Oh, no, there's some bigger guys over here. Let me have it. Oh, yeah. Get, Get out of the way, eight. Get him. Oh, yeah, eat him. Eat him. Can you get him? If you can eat this little a bunch of there them. we go. Now uh, if you can get that guy. Oh no, you didn't you weren't supposed to break apart. I think you're gonna be too small. Oh yeah, he's bigger than you. There you go. Ah. No, you were supposed to stay alive, man. I was I was feeding you. Well, but, I'm still alive. But I think we're gonna go ahead and uh, end the episode there, guys. Again, if you like these episodes, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe. Definitely helps grow the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Also make sure to leave those comments down below because we do love hearing back from you guys. And uh, we will have another uh, community day next Wednesday. Starts around 5.30 to 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. Um, my computer might be in by that time, but don't hold me to it because they're taking a while to send out the RAM and a few of the other key pieces. So it may uh, take a little while to get to me, unfortunately. Uh, but as soon as that happens, we'll be doing these things live. We'll be streaming them uh, on YouTube or Twitch. We'll have to figure out which one will be better for most of you guys who are watching as YouTube. well as, yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards YouTube as well for the most part. I think that's going to be easier. I'm already set up with YouTube. I have all my fan base here. And all of you guys watching, are you watching it on YouTube? So uh, I think that's going to be easier for everybody all around. And you won't have to go make a new screen name and password for Twitch and stuff like that. So um, for now, I think that's the way it's going to go. But again, next Wednesday, around 5.30 to 6 uh, uh, Central Standard Time, we go usually to around 10 or 11. That's usually when uh, Hydros will log on somewhere around 9 to 10, and we'll do a couple hours with him, although he hasn't logged on tonight. So hopefully at some point uh, we will we'll be able to do a few videos with him. And again, guys, uh, thanks for watching. We will catch you next time.